But anyway, so she ran away. She found her way to, to Ginsburg and our lot, all of those guys in New York City. I mean, oh my God. Um, poet in her own right. Uh, there's a book called The Beat Women or The Women of Beat, and she's in there, okay? Many, many, many books of poetry, other books. She's an activist. She works with migrant workers. She works in the prisons. That's where she was last night in prison, right? When they let her out? They let her out. <laughs> and they shouldn't. If they knew what I knew about it, no. But I work in the prisons too, and they let me out too, so you know, whatever. <laughs> And then, and she, um, she's traveled all over the world, climbed Mount, I mean, there is nothing this woman has not done. She is a special, wonderful, fantastic person, and I'm so happy you came over to Clarissa's and that Janine Pommy Vega can come up, come up here. So this is for her. I have a poem here about the walking woman with the tambourine, which I'll tell you about later that I'm going to do for my friend Betty McDonald. This is for Lenore. One thing about you, Lenore, is you knew and could not be prevailed upon to say you didn't. The odd thing about these days, one could call the latter years is there's no dissimulation, no fanfare, no sovereignty of the flesh, gone soon. Even you can't believe it's worth the battle. A cloud shaped like an eagle turns into a bat and a turtle. I wish it were a starry bear, and you here mesmerized by its corporeal presence as it walks out of the sky. I snared a picture of you from the internet, a Hawkeye portrait from last year. He said, she sure looks different from when I met her in 72. Yeah. Not really, I said, she looks the same. Your laughter on Haleakala Crater, the fog at dawn, us hiding in the bathroom from the cold, the authority in your voice announcing, my friend needs help, and your advice about Clearing customs, giggle, run amok, and drop things. If that fails, just faint. <laughs> the housebound clutter surrounding you through years had a smell to it. Thousands of books and a water cooler, and poems tucked down into the pillows. You'd rather bear pain alone, you said, than scream in public. The beavers succeeded in jamming the outtake pipe, you'll be happy to know. They preside now over standing water, a friendly habitat for birds. A slender new moon rides the sky, and the cloud of a swimmer with strong muscular strokes moves east, larger than life, like you. You are on your way. prison system. I've been working in the prisons for about 30 years. And, uh, and I've got a poem here called Habeas Corpus. It's too bad that we didn't have the band because it's good with the blues, but 
It's all right for that. It goes the habeas corpus blues. Hey, you know, well, I don't have to explain. <laughs> habeas corpus? Habeas corpus? 700 years built into that question. Have you got the body? A cornerstone of justice. Can you show a body for the people to see? In police investigations? In the kidnapping of foreign citizens for US international terrorism? In the prison system holding up our economy as surely as slavery? In the early days? In the rubbery tentacles of parole? They can reel a body back in years after release for a dirty urine, for an in-your-face political stance, for a rally, for a public speech. They can reel you in like so many lobster traps in the Gulf of Maine. Reel you into the deuce club where you live your years out two at a time. Parole denied. Parole denied. Parole denied, as long as they have domain over the body. Habeas corpus? Yes, they have the body. And they can gnaw away at anyone on the outside who tries to get in. I've calculated in 10,000 days, more than 26 years, I've seen prisoners ganged up on by guards with sticks. Right in front of me, an ordinary citizen their glasses broken at the visiting room door. I've seen lines of men with carbon copy shackles from the slave days shuffle by me. Have seen whole families reviled for visiting. Mothers stripped of underwire bras and dignity. I have worked inside a prison for women, forbidden to touch, forbidden to hug each other, I have been in meeting rooms wired for sound that could kill the inner ear and provoke waves of nausea. I've been hustled through the back way to sidestep the murder of a man in solitary. What can they do? Anything they want. They have the body. Habeas corpus blues for blue. The poet who never got out under Governor Gray. Not one murderer released on his watch. He overrode his own investigative panels, his own California judges. Habeas corpus blues for every long-termer who has violence in the instant crime in Pataki's New York. Only one out of 17 released by parole board, the Robespierre's cabal of commissioners. 22 people who sit in judgment, over 64,000 souls. Habeas corpus blues for an Irish warrior, Gary McGivern, wheeled on the gurney to his deathbed, who would not release his grip on his sister's hand, would not let them take him down. Habeas corpus blues for a system I wish I could hang from the nearest tree but overthrow is molecular from the inside out. Lenore Candell says, irony is the fulcrum of the universe. These are gray, green, smothering times. Cowardice is king. These are gray, green, smothering times. Cowardice is king. Christ is more alive in some of these men, said the chaplain of Attica, than most of the passers-by outside. Habeas corpus blues for a citizenry that does not see. If they come for me tonight, it is for you in the morning. For a press that won't speak out, will not bear witness. Habeas corpus, do they have the body in the body politic? Uh-huh, uh-huh, seems like every day. They have a little bit more.
was some, uh, yeah, <clears throat> some years ago, about five maybe, I think, I got this really aggressive case of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, when it first happened, I didn't know what it was. I just thought, uh, what the hell is this thing? It seemed like it was like a badger. Every move I made seemed suddenly to be circumvented. The elbow, the knee, the this, the that. So I wrote this blues. This is where a band would be good. <laughs> Used to be a mountain climber, highest passes on the earth. Said I used to be a climber, highest mountains on the earth. Lucky now to get my boots on, half a mile all I'm worth. Badger moves in fast as lightning, takes up lodgings in my shoes. Say he moves in just like lightning, in my gloves and in my shoes. Ugly name is Arthur Itis. I got the mean old, mean old badger blues. <laughs> Badger shot me in the elbow, in the wrists and on a roll. Ran over all my fingers like a bus over my soul. Seems my life some kind of funnel, all ease moving down a hole. I got the mean old, mean old Badger blues. Plan ahead is not my forte, but I can't stand last minute mess. Don't know when that Badger strike me next or when and what distress. Feel caught up in regulation, like a rat dressed in a dress. I got the mean old, mean old badger blues. If you see me on the highway, sort of hobbling, sort of stiff, badger kicked me in the shoulders, in the knees or in the hips. I just love to punch his lights out. <laughs> but I cannot make a fist. I got the mean old. Mino Badger Blues. Uh, so, the big thing you have to know is, you know, there's less crime than ever. It used to be 72,000, now there's 64,000. But the prisons have not been taken down. Why not? Because there's a whole system riding on the COs, you know, there's like a whole there's like a, a whole segment of the population that uh, is held up by, you know, working class people who need to do something and they're they're doing this job. Well, in order to keep the prisons filled, they have to be very cherry about who they let out, you know, who they give parole to. So this is about a friend, his name is Charles Chill, we call him. And um, this is his story. This happened, I guess, it happened not this past Christmas, but the one before. It's called On the Gate. I had a dream this morning. I was in a prison, busy helping an inmate out to freedom. Someone told me an old dear friend, a prisoner, had just died. The woman, slated for release, was free to go. But somehow, she could not get out the door. Go, go, I kept thinking as I saw her sitting at the gate. The night shift was almost over. She was on her way out, but there she sat. I was afraid she'd lose her chance. I woke up with the question, why? Why didn't she go? Now it is evening. My former student and friend, Chill, Charles Hamilton, whose cheerful go-ahead energy recognized no obstruction. He could pick up a lead ball and bat it to the sidelines like a balloon. Who said when we opened the first class in poetics at Bard, I know nothing about poetry, but I will be the best poet in this class. And he did. He made the most strides forward, miraculous strides toward claiming a voice uniquely his. This evening, I learned he died. A heart attack at 46. He was the single prisoner 
out of 24 who went up to the parole board and was granted parole. After 26 years, he was scheduled for release in three weeks. He died in jail. He was granted parole and died waiting at the door. Who is the criminal? Ask yourself. One out of 24 released, and he died waiting at the door. Sitting, you know, you get a hotel room, it's like a little shelf in the night, another shelf in the night. So, this was a night on the road in uh, I don't know where that Reggio Calabria in Italy. Little red candle in hotel room, open door onto a patio, shelf in the night air, full moon streets. How long have I been traveling? 47 years by my count. Romances, found and lost, deliberate quests, reconnoiters, forays. At 50, I'll throw a party for the landscapes and lit up streets of a hundred cities. Bleeding trees on Miraflores corners, balcony over Urubamba Valley, closed in Amazon fronds and buzzing insects. Shutters opened to Mediterranean tide. Rooftop wash line at Kali Gandaki defile. Below the Himalayan Torumla. Washing clothes after midnight, like now, to wear in the morning. Sleepy as I am, I am unwilling to give up my domain. The cup of tea and bowl of porridge, the homemade meal, a river of cars runs past with ebb and flow like the stream of traffic in Malibu. I am no less hungry than when I began. One's boots is, are, you know, supremely important. And, you know, they were sitting there for about three years, and finally I said, hey, you know, give it up. They're good boots. They could serve somebody. Is this called boots. My boots walked out the door, my friend. After all those mountains, the Andes, the slopes and feet of glaciers, the Himalayas' highest passes, and the trudge up and down Visokitatra with leaden feet and legs the consistency of anchors. After every separate Catskill mountain, the slopes of Elbert and Rainier, and the ant carrying my lunch away, all those mornings and afternoons, in every weather, the boots, both pairs, winter and summer, walk out the door. It's like this. Something turns in the afternoon, and it's no longer a row of irises in the sun, but lengthening shadows. The creek still gives its splashing inside the air, but something's gone. A friend you assumed would live forever. The boots you no longer wear are carefully wiped clean. You dust them off for the next customer. No more treks on your feet into the wilderness. They remain now in the mind, in the constancy of air. Breathe in, breathe out. You are saying goodbye to separate portions of yourself. Last vestiges and traces disappear like jigsaw puzzle pieces that one by one leave the table empty. No reason now to hold back from the next fabulous encounter. You are underneath the emptiness in the sound of wind. Yeah. So here's the last poem. <clears throat> this has to be 
it's uh, in every place that I go, especially around the Mediterranean, I look for traces of the old mother culture because they're certainly evident there. And this time I was in the, in the uh, museum in Reggio Calabria and there were like a lot of little figurines, a woman holding her left breast, a woman uh, in a throne, walking woman with a tambourine, a woman uh, stretched out, woman dancing, walking woman with a tambourine. So like I just, I just took notes. And then when I came back, I realized so many women. I, I worked for years with a great musician. Her name is Betty McDonald. And Betty was one of those walking women. Lenore was one of those walking women. Here's the way the story goes. There's a woman. She's standing in an apartment. And as she's standing there, she lives there with her mother and her husband. And as she's standing there, her husband comes up the steps outside the building. He comes up the steps. He opens the door. We don't know why. Is he drunk? He suddenly takes out a knife and stabs the mother in the heart. And the mother falls to the ground. And he wipes the knife off and goes back down the stairs. The woman who you'd least expect would make any kind of brave move, very modest, very self-effacing, takes the mother up from the floor and she folds the mother in her arms and her legs up like a funerary urn and she takes this package, her mother, and she ties it to herself around her waist and around her chest. Now she's got this big package and she puts on a blouse so no one will know and she leaves. And this is a long time ago and she leaves that, that town and she goes past another town and another and another. She keeps journeying and walking. She walks down by the rivers where no one goes, down where everybody shits in the alley, where people throw their garbage. She passes walls of towns where there's you know, celebrations and fireworks. And <clears throat> in the next one, there's gunfire and, and a lot of uh, anger. And she just keeps on marching. This goes on and on and on until finally one day. Now, meanwhile, her mother is desiccated. It, you know, the package is smaller. She doesn't have to hide so hard because you can't really see it that, that, uh, that prominently. So meanwhile, she's walking along and finally, one day, she sees a town and she marches through the, the city gates and she goes looking around, looking around. Finally, she finds an apartment up some stairs, just like her house. And she goes up those stairs and she opens the door. And this is a place where women live together. There's no one home, but she knows she's safe. And she tie, unties her mother from her chest, and she unties her mother from her waist, and the bones drop to the ground. And as soon as the bones hit the ground, her mother jumps up, alive, alive, alive again. That's the story. So here's the, that, that was a dream. So here's the, the poem. She beats a Tibetan drum to the road kills. This, you, you, if you can imagine Celia Cruz with this one, this is, you know, something like she would do. She beats a Tibetan drum for the road kills. Animals litter the road as bait in a spiraling cycle of death. The drum she holds up hums in her skeletal frame. She marches against squat nuclear towers, alien shapes licking poison into the river. She breaks into cryogenic sleep of ordinary folks, lulled unconscious before the TV. Wake up! Wake up! She calls in the window. Wake up! Wake up! Custom revelers circle the square. Central among them is the cadre of drummers, women drummers, beating Brazilian rhythms, not Sousa marches. No one is in lockstep. The woman with the tambourine glides over the pavement, 
her hips sway. We are moved to fire. The belly dancing sisters jangle bracelets, anklets, tinkling coins. The diminutive marcher with a Buddhist drum circles the prison where a man is to die. She circles slowly. The people gather a thousand, two thousand. We are moved to follow. Through the night, the entire town parades, saying no, saying no. The man to die looks out the window. At dawn, the lights flicker on and off. Here is Sampano, sings the woman. Sampano is here. Giulietta Messina with her tambourine calls the townspeople down to the circus. She breaks into dance. The acrobats do backflips. The goat climbs up an empty ladder. Tiny mirrors on the tent flap blaze in the sun. She walks through cities and civilizations, from Paleolithic through Neolithic age, through secret entries in the heart of the market, down the well and out the hidden river. She is in plain view. Arriving from somewhere, we did not catch. What is your name? She carries her mother, folded onto her chest like a skinny package. The woman walks behind friends she knows and friends she doesn't. The cemetery holds the usual suspects. People have a lot to say. The band kicks in, brass instruments and conga drums. The woman with the tambourine unties her dead mother and drops her down. Soon as the bones of the ground her mother springs up, alive, alive, alive again. Woman with the tambourine unties her dead mother and drops her down. Soon as the bones of the ground her mother jumps up, alive, 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 Live again. Yeah.